There are many, many different types of tomatoes on this planet. But not all tomatoes are created equal. And so, not all tomatoes are destined for making a great sauce. The most famous tomato for a great tomato sauce is the San Marzano tomato. It's beautiful, it's sweet, has very low acidity levels and has very little wet seed pockets, making it perfect for a nice, thick, creamy, delicious, great sauce. But what if you can't find San Marzano tomatoes? Then don't worry, just get yourself some Roma tomatoes. They're widely available and make a pretty nice sauce as well. When you just pick your tomatoes or you bought them from the store, don't just use them straight away. Let them ripen for a few more days so they'll get a more intense, sweet flavor that would be beneficial to your sauce. Enough talk. How to make sauce like a boss in five steps. Step one, peeling the tomatoes. Throw them in the boiling water. Here the tomatoes will get hot, hot, hot and start to expand, ripping themselves loose from their tight skin. After a minute, minute and a half, take them out and throw them in the ice water. Because of the big temperature difference, the tomato will go from being expanded to being contracted, loosening itself even more from their tight skin. Take out the core with a knife and hop, 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 hop. Step two, slicing or dicing or blending or maybe chopping them in two or keeping them as a whole. Hmm. Keeping your tomatoes intact will give you more options once you're ready to eat them. I also want to have different options later. A pulpy sauce for my pizza, a smooth soup, or even big chunks of tomato in my pasta. But I would also like to remove some of those watery seed pockets out of the tomato to have a denser, more concentrated sauce. So I cut them in two, squeeze, and throw them in the colander. When all tomatoes are halved, I will press out even a little bit more of that water so we'll end up with a nice dense tomato sauce and not a watery sauce. Step three, jarring. Make sure your jars, lids and hands are clean. Fill up the jars, squeeze in a few extra, but make sure to leave a nice bit of space on top of the tomatoes so they can expand during the next step. Clean the rim, close the jar and make sure it's nice and tight. Step four, boiling. All the jars are ready. We have a big pot of boiling water now slowly put the jars inside the water and leave them there for about one hour. In this time, the natural sweetness of the tomato will intensify. It will turn soft and mushy, so you can easily turn it into a beautiful, delicious sauce. And as an added bonus, all the bad bacteria will die. Meaning, you can store these beauties up to one year. Take them out, dry them off, now what you don't want to do is leave them outside in the cold environment or place them on top of a cold table. The big temperature difference might just crack them. So dry them and put them inside the warm box. Nice and cozy. During this cooling down period, something else will happen. The hot expanded air inside the pot will start to decrease. And instead of pushing the lid up, it will slowly start pulling the lid down, creating an airtight seal. And your tomatoes are now ready for long storage. 